Welcome back to the Tinkerage. I think it's time for another long workshop tour. Uh, the last one was in September 2017. Uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up above and a link down below in the comments so you can do a little bit of comparison. Now, I'm only going to concentrate on the Tinkerage today. I'll do a separate one for my storage at some other time. Uh, I have two sheds at the bottom of the garden. I've got quite a long garden. Uh, I've got two sheds down there where I keep kind of, sort of timber, lawnmowers uh, and the like. Uh, they're a complete mess. Uh, I've uh, Somebody commented on the other workshop tour video. Uh, I'm, I, I'm a bit of a hoarder, really. And I need to do something about that. And um, this might be the year that hopefully I might clear some stuff out a little bit. I'm just going to concentrate on the Tinkerage. I didn't do a tour after the reorganization series that I did last year. And it seems to be a popular thing to do at the start of 2020, to do a workshop tour. So here's mine. If you aren't familiar with the Tinkerage, it's a very small shop. It's just shy under 60 square feet. So only about sort of five square meters or so. So not very big at all. Uh, let's well start with the door. It's because point is any. I do put some storage on the back of the door. You might remember from the original tour, I had a lot of storage on the door. Uh, just over a year and a bit ago, I had the door changed and decided to have the door going out. And I didn't want as much weight on the door to give me some extra space by going outwards. Uh, so I tend to use this for storing my PPE. So I've got uh, a lab coat, some overalls. I've also got my, my long spirit level, which isn't a huge, really long. Uh, here in protection, uh, I particularly like the 3M Peltor Optime 3s. Uh, good for 32 decibels. Um, basically, I went for pretty much the best I could get. I haven't always looked after my hearing. That is uh, kind of a bit of a, re a regret. Uh, it's something that I don't take for granted anymore. GSP half mask. And uh, I do have some safety glasses. I don't always put safety glasses on uh, for everything because I do wear specs and I do have shatterproof lenses. But obviously there are concerns about things going in the side. So I do have some over glasses. Uh, if I need to, sort of a good vision, uh, if I'm not worried too much about detailed vision, then I might use some bold safety glasses. Uh, at some point, I'll get a prescription put in to a pair, uh, but that isn't cheap. So it's not something I've done yet. Uh, a good stack of bungees, very useful. I have a an old poncho tarp that I use sometimes uh, to create a bit of extra shelter outside if I need it. Uh, not that I do it very often. Gloves, stored on clips, bulldog clips, excellent for storing a variety of gloves. Uh, I'll show you some more about that in a second, the lower part of the door. So always keep those nice and handy. So also tucked down here is a broom. I've got a stack of gloves here, so a variety of gloves, thick gardening gloves, uh, sort of gloves for dealing with things that aren't very particularly nice. Uh, I've got some welding gloves. Uh, and some rubble gloves down there. I also keep a field dressing on a clip. It's quite loose, it doesn't come away. You know, it, it doesn't knock off, it's out of the way, but it's within reach of the floor. So if I was to hurt myself and fell on the floor, that is something hopefully I can reach. I keep another one almost directly behind the camera on the side of my table saw. So get back to that later. While we're down here, apologies for the not so great lighting. I still haven't sorted out the lighting in here. It is uh, something that's well overdue. Making decisions about kind of color temperature, that's something I've struggled with, and it's not a cheap decision, and I need to make sure I get it right. So this is the kind of floor side view of the bench. I'll just get out to the shop here at the moment. So I've got uh, some woods here. This tends to be more interesting woods. So I've got some oak in there. There are a couple of bits of pine, but mostly it's oak. Some, 
not very good. Identification. Wonky workshop. He's the guy. He's pretty good with wood. He said he's going to be doing a series about wood identification. I'm looking forward to that. I'll put a link to his channel up there so you can keep an eye out for that as well. So there's some bits of you and a variety of things. Uh, bottom corner, I've got a tub with my rattle cans and dustpan and brush. I need to get a place for the dustpan and brush. That's not something we sorted out. And a couple of tubs full of metal, but also a few bits of plastic. Uh, these are actually sort of for the vacuum. Uh, I think we may as well look at that while we're down here. Underneath the bench, right at the bottom, uh, I keep an extension lead for using with the lawn mower that kind of lives there, also the pressure washer. And I keep my Titan vac down there. I did a review. Uh, again, video will be up on the top and uh, down below. And then in the corner, that's kind of a junk corner. So, so down in the corner, I've got a couple of tubs full of bits of metal and interesting shapes that I like to use. Going on to the second row. So right in the corner, I have an uh, old bench grinder. And in the box, I have my large DeVault. 625 router, my Performance Pro 190mm miter saw. I've had that for a very long time. We bought that when I was working on my very first house that we had after we got married. Now, it served me well. It is a bit small, but it's, it's okay. Uh, then we have my scroll saw. So that's a work zone, which is a rebadged Shepak. And I have a box. This is my plumbing tools box. So everything I need for plumbing, uh, some emergency pieces, plumbing specific tools, they sit in there. So it's, it's ready to grab if I need it. So let's come around to the side here. Got a frost heater. So I just keep, I need to get that mounted on the wall. Uh, just keeps the temperature in here just above freezing. Uh, helps protect the paints. So you'll have seen a lot of this in the restructuring series I completed last year. So specific parts of this are in that series and there's a few live videos. So there is a playlist, I'll ask the playlist up above. So there's still work to be done here. I, there's still a lot of organisation need to be completed. I'm always, like most people, kind of moving things around. This becomes more efficient or depending on what I'm using on a regular basis. So starting here, we have a board, fairly obvious what tools I have here, easily accessible, things that I use regularly and I want to have at hand. But behind that, I have space for more tools. So spanners, variety of spanners and other bits and bobs that I use less often. Uh, saws, a couple of pieces for the combination square. These aren't things that I use regularly, um, but they're easy to hand, just a little magnet there. This does rattle a bit when I open it, not a big deal. Uh, I've had a spanner fall off once when I pulled it too harsh, so I might change this from screws to maybe some sort of hook. So underneath there we, I have uh, just sliding drawers, commonly lots of things, uh, screws and just assorted bits and bobs. There's one with kind of, sort of sewing uh, pieces, some needle, some thread and safety pins, cotter pins, uh, one with cotter pins, things for filling in the end of little bits of brass, little connectors, bushings, all sorts of little bits and bobs. And one of the things I want to do this year is get those labelled. Again, I'm not sure if I might move things around a little bit. So I've gone handheld to try and get into that corner. Uh, I've got some pad saws, some marking gauges, locking pliers, and one of the places where I keep some clamps 
uh, also my Gorilla Pod. So they're just held on a, a, a spare bracket from a shelf. Now this plastic tube, I've done a tip about using plastic tubes for storing things. Great for storing files. Uh, you get used to kind of knowing where each file is. So, although they're not labelled, it's not too much of a problem. Little bits of wire hanging here I use for holding things uh, while they're drying. Maybe after they've had some uh, oil on them, some fish. I've got a piece of cable sometimes that I put across so that I can hang, say, some wooden spoons or shapes that I've made. The desk lamp here, uh, which I have a cold to temperature bulb. I quite like this for working in. So it's likely that I'm going to head for about that kind of sort of 6,000 Kelvin mark. Uh, maybe 5,500. It seems to be there's not easy to get certain types of fittings in certain color combinations so just carrying on around a little bit actually i almost forgot uh, underneath the bench i have a drawer here uh, it's just like a lot of people it's almost like a junk drawer uh, it's full of all sorts of things uh, good place to keep your razors and anything else that one might want or useful for just about any crazy little thing um, quite a bit of stationery in there and small things that don't have a place anywhere else. I did have a second drawer under this part of the bench but when I installed this extra piece of worktop with these uh, dog holes in these were two pieces of kitchen worktop insets from where sinks have been cut out uh, taken from a, a skip squared them up matched them on uh, screwed in from underneath, so nice and solid. But I drilled some holes which match with a variety of uh, dogs that fix one that's a bit of a push. So great for clamping. I've got this uh, old, it's a record 52p vice here. I picked that for a tenner a couple of years ago. Uh, it needs tidying up, uh, it works fine, but it could be prettier. And so that's, that's a, another project at some point. The lamp is just mounted on the wall, uh, just a, screwed onto the wall there, the base. And I, this is why I do quite a bit of work where I need that kind of light. Uh, it's often a space that's available. Well, I don't like using this for electronics on this side because the holes can be a bit of a pain. Uh, so I tend to do that on the other bench. Talking of electronics and going around a little bit more. So batteries, solder, jumper wires, and wire, a variety of wires, single filament, multi-filament for fixing things and jobs. And, you know, assorted bits of junk, glue sticks, Super glues, some epoxy resin down here as well. Just this really cheap uh, pound shop, dollar store type. Uh, more batteries, some super glue. Keep that kind of thing sort of handy. And to the corner, I've got this clock uh, switch, which I don't use as a clock switch, but I just it's a place to store it, so I use that. I keep my socket test or also in a socket just as a, a good place to keep things. Uh, soldering iron, my DeVault drill. I did have my drills in holders and I decided to take those out because I use it so often and so just tucking them away at the back not too much of a problem. Uh, my main multimeter, I have three multimeters in here this is my main one uh, it's nice and handy. Again, something I can grab nice and quick next to a handy tool. I don't particularly like this. I've had this a long time. It's quite a small base. It's a bit unstable. The clamps aren't great. Last year, I visited Rob Thomas, Prickly Source, and he had a nice little helping hand set that he'd made. And I might try and make my version of it at some point. 
I'll put a link to his channel again up there down below. Nice guy, go and check him out. Monitor for the computer, that's above, so we'll come back to that. So into the corner here. Racco soap storage. Had this one for oh, must be 30 years now. Uh, it's great, it's moving really sometimes. It's been fixed a couple of times, but it's fallen apart. So a little popper in the corner there. Uh, what a place to fix. Again, as the other side, this year, one of the jobs is to get these labelled, decide actually where things are going to go. Uh, some work I've made on that, but it's not finished. One of the things I did decide last year was to put you know, my screws into drawers like this rather than keeping them in boxes. Uh, so some are over here, some are over there, the smaller ones tend to be over there. And I actually quite like that. Although I put the little sort of the remains of the box. So these are four mil, 30 mil screws. Uh, I'm, I, I like that. Although some of the larger screws aren't in there, the ones that are kind of, you know, sort of decking type screws. There's some junk in here. Uh, I did get rid of some junk again. Uh, I need to get rid of things. I almost forgot, I keep a salvage trimmer, a skip, a couple of divers, weights, uh, ideal for kind of holding things down. Just popping around a little bit, we'll stay at this level, go to the top on our second go around. Another board glue gun, Bosch glue gun, bought that a couple of years ago. Uh, my other one was not very good. Uh, it was only a six millimeter. This is 11 millimeter. Really nice piece of kit. The only fault I would say that it has is it does not have a power light. Uh, it is something I'm actually toying with the idea of installing a power light because it's not that difficult a thing to do. So maybe watch out for that as a project. Maybe this should, maybe, maybe not. We'll skip around to that. Another tool board. Uh, I need to improve this though because the cable does have this tendency um, to get behind my tape measure. It's so need to replace this year. Uh, it's just not in as good a condition as it, it should be. Uh, so pliers, cutters, smaller pliers and cutters. Uh, if you don't know about these, paramedic, EMT shears, trauma shears, variety of different names. Great for cutting a variety of materials. They don't leave a really clean edge uh, because they, they work on a serrated system. They'll cut through a penny fairly easily uh, and they're really quite cheap. Uh, sort of five or six pounds, uh, I guess kind of you know, seven or eight dollars, something like that. I have another lamp here, again, one that got rescued from being thrown away. Uh, so just a little LED lamp, again, it's quite cold. I use that for detail, I also use that with the bandsaw sometimes. Uh, coming back to this, I've got uh, some adjustable spanners. Uh, a tiny little one I found in a car boot sale. Uh, wire strippers, little hammer. And again, this opens up and on the back, I have some chisels, uh, some hemostats up here. Again, great for gripping things, particularly in kind of electronics, jewellery work. Uh, they clamp. Locking forceps is another name for them. Uh, honing guide, router bits, sockets, some sharpening. I, I need to improve my sharpening system. Some little tiny sharpening stones. They're little ones, they're okay, but they're not great. And I need to get better with my sharpening of my chisels. So that's something to look out for this year. It's going down a little bit. Uh, my socket failed on me the other day. The switch has uh, failed to switch off. So that socket face is going to have to be replaced. Uh, this is out in the tinkerage. This was a gift to me from Tom Peterson at uh, Refuse Reuse. Fantastic piece of artwork. Great guy, does some great, fantastic work. It's out in the tinkerage because I want to make a holder for it uh, to go above my desk. I had a rearrangement of my shelves and 
ran out of space. But I want it out by my desk. And so I'm going to make a, a bracket. I can't decide which way around to have it. This way around. Or that way around. Might try and make a bracket that will, I can put it either way around. But that might be trickier. So because at the moment I'm thinking something that's kind of going to support it there and there. I might be able to do that with just a couple of rods. But if I make them the same height, then it's pointing down slightly. And I'd like it to be pointing just level. So uh, possible again, another possible project for that. On the side of my racker boxes, I keep a variety of spirit levels and magnets. Great for place to store them. Um, it's kind of maybe, yeah, nine inch spirit levels. They're cheap and cheerful, but they work and do a trick and the magnet just keeps them in place. Uh, keep a variety of other magnets, also kind of pick things up from the middle of nowhere type magnets. Great for that. Just keeping on the sort of mid shelf here. Little Katsu router, nice piece of kit. Want to make a little base for that for hand carving. Circular saw, this is really old. Uh, a little bit older than the miter saw. Uh, that's okay, it's not great, it's not a track saw, but it will do the job. My die grinder, I bought this because of the flex shaft. Uh, it was cheaper than buying a Dremel. Uh, the, doing a lot of R's and E's, which I'll have to try and hopefully edit out. So I really love this piece of kit. I have had to take the flex shaft apart and put some high temperature, high speed grease in because it was getting super hot when I first had it. I was to the point I was thinking of sending it back for a bit of research. My only bit of dislike for it is it does not have a hanging loop. I should have spotted that before I bought it. So, but it does have a collet, a collar place there. So I'm going to make a mount using that in order to hold things up. Again, hopefully I have a project for this year. Electric plane, small router, so it's a quarter inch router. The one underneath is a half inch router. Jigsaw, this is an old Bosch uh, that's over 20 years old as well. Uh, tiny little um, a circular saw, almost it's about the size of an angle grinder uh, with quite a small blade. I'll do this one handed. You can see it's a, about a four inch blade in there. Uh, useful for thin materials, but not much else. And then have sanders. So we've got a quarter sheet sander, belt sander, and a detailed sander in the corner. Screwdriver rack. Uh, let's keep rulers and, and markers here. Pencil. I try and keep pencils all over the place. So a variety of kind of screwdriver shaped tools. So some are a bit awkward, like this one. It's not one I use very often, it's a, just a tack lifter. I'm not overly happy with that particular arrangement, but I might come through to that. I just like to have them handy. I know which ones are which. It's obviously it's hard to tell. You don't know which ones are flats and which ones are Phillips or PosiDrive. Uh, but I know uh, most of these are quite old. Braddle. Some of them just need a bit more work in terms of maybe a little bit of loosening, a little bit of file work. Automatic center punch, really nice piece of kit if you're doing a little bit of metal work. It's using a hammer. Uh, some precision screwdrivers. Uh, and I'm probably going to mount some things across here. I'm not sure what yet, but we'll come to that at some point. Sanding sticks, easy to make. Bits of dowel, bits of strip wood, just wrap. Paper around, uh, use masking tape to hold it in place, and then on the masking tape, write what size it is. Measuring stick and some jewelers, jewelry pieces, uh, hammer. Again, that's why I like to keep handy. Other hammers, so there's a stack of hammers going down there, plus a, a ring mandrel for jewelry work. Uh, I keep that quite handy. 
I don't do a lot of jewellery work anymore, but I like to know where that is. Um, because every now and again, I just bash my wedding ring and that helps just get it back into shape. Over on this kind of corner, I keep some of the bigger tools and I just move them out as I need them. So I've got my little one inch belt, five inch disc sander here. Really love that piece of kit. Really glad I've got that. Small little bandsaw. This is a work zone bandsaw, so all these own. Uh, essentially, it's the same as quite a few of the sort of very cheap ones. Wasn't very expensive, about seventy-five pounds. They do do a slightly bigger one now, about one hundred and fifty pounds, which is a decent table. The table is probably the weakest part of that. So these are easy enough to essentially just slide around. which I tend to do for when I need to use them. Uh, that's obviously quite lightweight. I don't have the space to keep things out big time. So I've got a, my drill press here is a very old Woolworths drill. So for those in the UK, not Australia, because I believe in Australia they're still going, but I might be wrong on that. Very old, very cheap Woolworths drill. It's very well speed in a very cheap little drill press. Now this is a drill press from, well again, it has to be probably 20 years ago. Um, it's a couple of little breaks on it, but it serves me well. I've got my planes, so they need some work. They need quite a bit of work. The small block plane I'm probably going to replace. The wheel is just horrible. It's very difficult to make any adjustments. Again, another plastic, Piping, PVC piping, it's just waste pipe. You can easily cut it on a mitre saw or with hacksaw by hand. Uh, cut it at an angle of 45 degrees, or you can change that angle. And it's just a single screw. You can use some glue to maybe hold them together if you want a bit more rigidity. I don't, it gives me more flexibility. So just bits and bobs. I've got screwdrivers, Allen keys, sharp knives, spare pencils, brushes, locking tweezers. Use these a lot. They're from jewelry making and they're really, really useful. There are a variety of things. Some measuring bits and bobs. Uh, multi tool. Picked that up at a car boot sale. Nice bit of kit. Very, very useful. And so that's an oscillating multi tool. And then a, a, again, a sort of a Dremel knockoff, a Black and Decker Wizard. That again, one inherited from my father, as was the Woolworths drill. In the back corner, I've got a Bosch hammer drill, blue Ryobi heat gun, uh, and just a variety of bits and bobs, things like pop riveter, and a variety of cutters, spoke shave, again, needs a bit of work. Not much room for me down here. I'm literally, my back is against uh, things behind me, uh, so it gives you an idea of how much sort of space there is. Floor space is about four and a half feet uh, this way, so about 1.4 meters, and about or just in the four feet this way, so sideways. Uh, so just over a meter. This is my table saw and it's on a portable rack, you can sort of see. I don't have the space to keep it out. Uh, it's very old, bought it second hand, uh, 10 inch blade, cast aluminium top. Uh, I don't have a mitre gauge for it that fits nicely. I've got a tiny little one, which isn't really much use. One of the projects this year, of course, is the classic table saw sled. So that's something I'm going to try and do. That might make it more useful. My concern with table saw sled is where do I keep the sled so that it stays flat? Because I don't have really the space for it. So I don't have the space to keep it on top unless I make it from some very thin material. But maybe from say something like six millimeter MDF, that might uh, allow it to fit. Twelve might not fit, but I'm also not going to fit it there with uh, front and back. So that's something I've got to think about. A uh, variety of boxes. I think this is my box of cycle repair tools, and underneath. Some metal working stuff. So my box of angle grinders. I've got a number of angle grinders because that's what you do, don't you? you? Get a number of angle grinders. 
And I've got a couple of welders. I've got a SIG welder and a MIG welder. Uh, they were gifted to me last year at Maker Central uh, by Jim from Way Cycles on Instagram. Uh, very generous on his part. I still haven't used them yet. Sorry, Jim. But again, something for this year. I've got everything I need for the stick welding. I don't have either some flux core or some uh, gas for use with the MIG. So that's something I need to sort out at some point. Notice so I also keep hats and hand saws down here. So I've got three there. I've got a sort of a job sort of contractor's Irwin, which is just nice. It's it's getting quite old, but it just keeps going. And I've got a couple of spears and spear and jacksons. Uh, two different ones. Uh, one's a universal, so eight points per inch, and the other is second fix, so ten points per inch. So there, I try and keep them in as good a condition as possible, and they work really nicely. Kind of going round, staying down here. I have, I have a stool, so I shall move out of the way as best I can, and then into the corner behind my little fan heater, I have my compressor and some just sort of general storage. I have a, a toolbox there which I can't remember what's in off the top of my head. It might even just be used for storage and. Just a variety of bits and bobs that aren't particularly useful. Some works in progress. Uh, the one here with the fabric on is a Viking style shield. And I keep a couple of big club hammers. They're almost that's kind of like my anvil, uh, or as good as I've got for an anvil at the moment. So staying down on floor level, can't get the camera far enough back to be in shot and for you to have a good chance of seeing things. I have underneath the sink. So this is a kitchen sink. Uh, with a piece of board on top, so it's some 18 millimeter ply, and that becomes a dumping ground. I have tidied it a little bit, but it's still actually a bit of a mess. We'll go back up there in a second. Again, just a variety of things. My stock of uh, gloves and some, so just some drawers. First one is sorting trays. It's a variety of different types of tray, varying from Things like old sorting trays, things like this, bowls, high tins, magnetic little sort of tins, um, and kind of sort of some plastic pots. Great for sorting things out. Uh, just, uh, just quite useful to have. I might try and pare that down a little bit, but there are times when I have used almost the entire contents of that drawer. Grinding and polishing resources, so grinding wheels, metal polish, and then down the bottom, spare tape, straps, uh, steel wire in there, some threads, kind of large industrial sized threads. So things like this. So hiding quite a lot of things here is this uh, workmate. It's a, it's a knockoff of a workmate. Uh, I do have a. a a Black & Decker workmate and another one down in my storage shed. But this is the one that's in best condition, so I use that quite a bit for working. I've set it up with say, the mitosaur on outside because there isn't really room to use the mitosaur in here. Some flat sheet goods there. And then chest of drawers. Really quite useful having chest of drawers. Uh, papery type things. I probably really shouldn't hoard so many things. I've also got plastic in there. It's quite useful for making shims, Ziploc bags and other types of storage. And then these drawers contain a variety of things. Top drawer is So top drawer are tools that I don't use so often. Some of them need to go, some of them are useful, some of them are worn out. Uh, odd little things like the grip for the drill, it's not needed. Uh, a broken rotary tool, some saws, and not very good hard back saw, tenon saw. 
So, uh, probably do something with that. It's not easy to get these in and out of it. You can tell, especially one-handed. Holding on to camera. Air tools and waxes. And then I've just got drawers of junk, electronics, uh, some finishes, some more wires. I've got a microwave transformer down there, which I'm hoping to turn into a Lichtenberg machine at some point. I want to try and find a way of doing that, which is safer than some of the other ways that are demonstrated on YouTube. So going to the size, you can see, yes, this is still a dumping ground variety of cork and, and silica and some projects in progress or bits for projects that I want to make. Uh, this is a tub of old tools that I inherited from my father and some of those are my grandfather's. Uh, so there's some really nice old tools in there. I have, I do, I have used these and I do sometimes still use them. Uh, put some chisels. Uh, not in great shape. Uh, yeah. I think cut butter, but I have an idea for a project involving these tools. Uh, hopefully, again, that will happen this year. Tapes, screws that don't fit over there, just in little drawers, washing up type things, cleaning things. And then I've got some racco boxes, again, started to label, uh, but I want to improve the labeling system. So a couple of empty ones, things like hollow wall fittings, uh, some electronics, Arduino, Dremel bits, cable clips, things that I want to be able to sort of grab and use fairly easily. And then last bit at that kind of level, into the corner, my charging station. I would like to have just one type of battery, but I'm I'm not in the position where I can afford to have just one battery system. So there are four different chargers there, and things like oils, WD-40, cleaning fluids, into the corner. And underneath, I've got a little oven I picked up a car boot cell, five pounds, which will get used hopefully for some HDPE inspired by. People like brothers make. Keep some clamps here. Right, time to go up and back around. So let's just start where we are. I'll do the ceiling as well at the same time. So I've got this tube mounted here. There's a tips video about that. And at the end of that, I've got a face shield on this side. I've got my welding helmet on this side. And that's hiding. So I've got some electronic storage. On top of that, I've got my spare bandsaw blades and heat proof mat. My sanding paper, stored in sheets in kind of manila folders. So if I want a particular size, I pull out two and I take the one that I want. I can see the numbers. So the numbers are written on there, so that's 240 grit. And that's nice and easy then to just pop back in once I've taken a piece out. And I know where to put it back in as well. And when I'm using paper, I might put it in like that to know that that's the one that's being used. So up on top here, just some additional bits of storage just hidden away. Uh, clamps here, there and everywhere. Uh, tubs, so one full of bolts, one full of nuts and bolts. Uh, so kind of bolts are on their own, nuts and bolts there in pairs and matching. Uh, screws and I tend to have kind of sort of pouches, uh, CDs. I used to have them in cases, you may remember from the previous tour, uh, but to save space, I've taken those out. We'll come back to the CD player because that's a, a higher level. Screws, carabiner y type things, nails, keep those in a tub. And I've just got sort of things like ice cream tubs, really good for. Storing assorted things in, so I've got carving tools, magnets, staples, fire lighters for the barbecue, uh, sorted components, I need to label those, first aid kit, so it's nice and easy to hand. So that's things like plasters and wipes, easy to get to, 
everyone in the house knows where that is, but obviously that's not the trauma pieces, which are down on floor level and within arm's reach there. Component storage in these kind of sort of sorter type box, almost like Sortimo's, but much, much, much cheaper. Uh, tins, things like wire wool, uh, resistors, some test leads and, and other leads like that. My skull, which I've never still decided on a name. Again, a project for this year from giveaway by Chris Smith, Mad Maker. I have a Bluetooth speaker. My plan is to try and mount that inside there. I'm going to add some other electronics as well. Maybe drill the centre of the eyes out to put some red glows behind or uh, maybe other colours. I don't know yet. Uh, old PC. I have a mains network uh, system. So using the mains wiring, electrical wiring of the house network connector. That's hidden behind. That gives me internet out here when things are switched on. Up above on this side, clamps. It's all within arm's reach. Now I'm not particularly tall. I'm five foot eight on a good day and I don't even need to put my arms straight to reach up. So this is not a very particularly high room. This lamp yeah, it really gets in the way sometimes. So some light, low profile LED lights are one of the things that I'm looking at putting in. Although I'm also thinking of maybe having it on some sort of tilt system so I can angle them as I need them. More tubs, variety of different styles. These ones just cheap ones from Ikea. Uh, my kids had those for years and they had a clear out and so I kept them. Again, just all sorts of bits and bobs. I've got lots of bits and bobs. Sockets at the moment are in there. They're in sort of blind PVC type cases and I didn't like that. And I had a couple of different ones. One was not complete. And they were just taking up a lot of space. I don't use sockets, it's a huge deal, so I've put them into there for the moment. But I may find a different approach to that. Uh, drill bits, two things drill bits and screwdriver bits, jigsaw blades, sanding. So it's belts, delt discs, flap wheels, things like that. And then into the corner, I've got things like doweling, jig cable ties, heat shrink, uh, some sand, some I think it's something like a 40 grit sandpaper on a roll that somebody gave me. You can see here I've got the I've got a hose for the compressor, uh, auto extraction hose, really nice piece of kit, got that cheap from again Aldi. Now it's not pro level kit Aldi but for me it's I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's cheap. And that's a useful thing to kind of sort of think about. So similarly over here and come to an end, uh, more clamps. These are my sort of G clamps, and a couple of quick release. The tub there, that just gives some materials in. So there's just slides out there fairly easily. It's a great place for storing a few materials. And behind, more boxes of ironmongery, bits from kitchens. I've got a tub with forstner bits, another tub with masonry and SDS bits. And what have we got? Greeblies, miscellaneous, miscellaneous bits and bobs, finishes, glues, string, some tubs with different types of screws in, so more specialized screws, so dome head screws, self-tappers, brass screws, some hollow wall fittings, picture hooks, cavity anchors, biscuits, biscuit jointer. I don't have a biscuit jointer. I have borrowed one uh, from my father-in-law a couple of times, uh, but I do have a biscuit jointer bit for my router. Um, but I find that quite fussy. You know, it's, one day I'll, I'll get myself a biscuit jointer. I don't really use it enough to justify, again, space. CD player moved. It was over there above the door. Actually, no, it was above, it was behind the camera here. CDs were above the door. And I moved it over there. Speakers are kind of tucked away a little bit more. To be honest, I don't really use it as much anymore. I, tend, I listen to so many podcasts. 
I tend not to put music on. Uh, and again, just then storage. I've got sort of sort of chemicals type things up in the corner, uh, some more oils, glue sticks, brushes, the stuff that you kind of need at some point but you forget about. Now that actually is real quite a problem when you've got a small space or even quite a big space. It's difficult to label things in the corner. So one of the things that I will do at some point, it's one of those whenever jobs, is I'm actually going to create a little map of where things are. Uh, it's very hard. My family know where certain things are. If they can get me a hammer, can get me a drill, that's usually not too much of a problem. But if I was to say, could you get uh, some methylated spirits, they're probably not going to be able to find it very easily. Apologies for the length of this. This is a long tour. Uh, really going into detail. It's a small space, and I want you to see the kind of detail of how I cram things in. And I know that I've missed a couple of things out. However small your space is, you can do stuff. I've got a lot of things in this space, and it is possible to do all sorts of things in a small space. I'm lucky that I have actually got a workshop. If you've only got a desk, even if you've only got somewhere a, a dining table, and you need to keep things in boxes, it is possible. I'd love bigger space, and maybe at some point in the future I will have a bigger space again. Yeah, for those of you who don't have big spaces, do consider looking at things like maker spaces or in the UK things like men's sheds. Great opportunities to maybe share tools, share working with other people to learn new skills, uh, maybe to have tools or use of tools that you haven't got the space or money for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look around. If you've stayed this long, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Tinkerage and how it is at the moment. I'll do another one of these maybe in a couple of years' time if things have changed massively. If you have enjoyed it, please do consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notification button, and you can also join my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram. All the links for that will be down below. Bye for now.